By the night, there's a lot of drug trafficking that does come in across the border. It's, it's, they play for keeps out here, and we're in a very remote, desolate area. On the morning of May 18, 2001, the Stagecoach Journey crew broke camp. They were in extreme southwest New Mexico. It was day 55 of their trip, and much had changed. Their entourage of trucks, trailers, and crew members was smaller, down to bare essentials. They'd found they needed far less support on the trip than planned. The generosity of ranchers and townspeople along the way more than made up for the smaller crew. Trail boss Rick Hamby reduced the crew so they could return to responsibilities at home. As peaceful as it looked, this country was the 21st century equivalent of the Wild West. The stage had been just north of the Mexican border for the past several days, and the U.S. Border Patrol had warned them to be on the lookout for outlaws drug smugglers, and illegal immigrants. But before they contended with the possible dangers ahead, they would fulfill a long-held promise to school children in Animas, New Mexico. Those kids in Animas, uh, you talk about remote. It was a remote, remote area. They only go to school four days a week. Uh, their regular school week is four days long because of the distance they have to travel. Uh, some of the teachers even commute uh, they, they come from El Paso to drive 140 miles. Although their crew was smaller, they continued to honor their commitment to schools and school children along the way. Two students from Animus hitched a ride. It's actually fun even though it's slow because yeah. it's historical. I know. Not every kid gets to ride anymore. Really nope. It's probably very rare to see one of these. Huh, Bobby? It is. My mom thought I would get bored riding this and I'm like, Mom, yeah. it may be slow, but it, not, not every kid in the school got to ride it. Yeah. Only two boys got to ride it. Yeah. I need that mail, my friend. More than a year before the journey began, Rick Hamby told school children in West Plains, Missouri, to write letters to students in Animas, New Mexico. He promised to haul those letters by stagecoach. This was the day he delivered the mail. These letters have been written from the first grade class in Junction Hill School in West Plains, Missouri, all the way across this state, which is called Oklahoma, and all the way across this part of Texas. See this pink part? This is Texas. And then all the way across New Mexico, all the way over to here, to the kids at the first grade class in Animus Elementary. And that's you guys. Rick Hamby wanted students here to understand the rich history of the Butterfield Overland stage route that passed through their area and the importance of this first transcontinental mail route. That was a, the first mail drop in 140 years at Animus, New Mexico at that school. Ashley, Ashley I like my class. Delivering a few letters from Missouri students to New Mexico students was, in Rick Hamby's mind, one of the most important missions of the stagecoach journey. Get up, Lester! Get up, Having delivered the mail in Animus, they turned south, moving ever closer to the Mexican border and ever deeper into dangerous territory. The Border Patrol warned them to keep constant vigilance for desperate drug smugglers and illegal immigrants. This area was among the least patrolled border segments and therefore had seen a significant increase in illegal crossings. Smugglers carrying backpacks filled with illegal drugs cross the Mexican border and head north. The Border Patrol calls them mules because they only carry contraband and don't sell it. But all too often, these human mules become desperate and lost in the harsh desert terrain. They run out of food and water. They steal vehicles, horses, and threaten anyone who gets in their way. They don't care. I mean, their attitude of life is if, if they take you away and you end up in the ground, they don't care. They're moving north. They're going to take what you have. 
They're going to take all your supplies in order to survive. These men, they get desperate, and that's anybody. When you get desperate and you have to live, you take chances. Another threat comes from illegal immigrants crossing the border looking for work. They pay so-called coyotes to take them across. Once in New Mexico or Arizona, the coyotes leave their charges behind, and the illegal immigrants end up struggling for days in the desert, deceived by the coyotes into thinking it was just a night's walk to Phoenix or Albuquerque. I had a friend of mine that was hiking a trail over at uh, Montezuma's Pass. When she came down, there were three illegals right there. They didn't harm her, thank, thank God, but they did take her van, and uh, so she was left stranded. You cannot leave your vehicles unattended. Uh, if you live on the border, you cannot leave your house unattended. Hundreds of illegal immigrants die in this country every year. Others, desperate for food and water, show up at ranches in the Animas Valley. This whole territory is, is a major route for the uh, Mexican illegals to come up to seek work in the United States. And it's not just people from Mexico. One rancher told the stagecoach crew he was awakened in the middle of the night to find two dozen Chinese illegal immigrants in his front yard, near death from starvation and thirst. The crew planned to cross a mountain pass only a few miles north of the border. But on this day, the Border Patrol reported the problem, a face-off across the barbed wire between dozens of Border Patrol and hundreds of Mexicans. Agents worried it might be a diversion tactic for illegals to cross elsewhere. As a precaution, the crew loaded their weapons. John, at one point, the team became skittish. No one knew if they sensed danger lurking nearby or were simply being stubborn mules. The crew headed for the mountain pass to camp for the night, despite the warning. This is outlaw country. This is the, uh, we just come up out of the Animus Valley. They play for keeps out here, and we're in a very remote, desolate area, probably 40 miles to the closest town. Things can get pretty western at any time. As far as the illegal drugs, this is this is one of the hot spots in the in the United States as far as along the border section. But, uh, you see a lot go on here that you know makes you feel bad. We have a lot of people coming across the border looking for a better way of life. They're coming out of a country that things are tough in. They'll cross the desert and walk 40 miles to try to get to where they can give their families a little better life and go their children up in a little better environment. And it's tough. They'll come across the desert floor with just a little bit of water and if things go bad, they don't make it. It was well past sunset as they made camp in the mountains and fed their livestock. They had no idea what lay in the darkness beyond their lantern lights. But they did know they were just seven days from the end of their journey in Tombstone, and a feeling of accomplishment set in as they built their fire. The night there in the Pelham Seals, when we camped there on the Mormon Battalion Trail, was the most special night as far as, uh, as the, the purity of stage coaching. We know that we're six miles away from looking over the peak of that mountain into the valley that comes into Douglas and up to Tombstone. You, you're starting to taste that you're gonna make it. And that was so remote up there, I actually started to be very confident that we had had about every problem you can imagine come up. I did not see any way that we could not make it other than death itself. Sir, and <laughs> Although in coming days they would learn that in a single incident, 14 people perished in the desert nearby, attempting illegal entry. Their night in the mountain camp passed with no problems. Next morning, they hitched up to head west 
Across the past, tombstone, and the last days of the stagecoach journey.